But Mexico took the president's tariff threat very seriously, and they're starting to take enforcement at their southern border seriously. This is important to both countries. Uh, we now have Mexico doing more than the Democrats who work behind me on Capitol Hill on securing our southern border. Kellyanne Conway, a few hours ago today, the White House taking aim at Democrats after reaching a last-minute deal to head off the tariffs against Mexico. Our headliner today here in studio, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, a Republican on the Homeland Security Committee as well as Judiciary and Armed Services Committee, which will keep you busy. Senator, <laughs> good, good morning, morning to you. Thanks good for morning. your time. What was your initial reaction to what's happening with Mexico now? What do we need to understand? Well, this is a great step forward. I mean, expanding the Remain in Mexico program, which will help us end catch and release here in the United States, is a big deal. The ability to return these illegal immigrants to Mexico while their asylum claims are processed is good. Getting Mexico to commit to actually policing its southern border in a more serious fashion is absolutely necessary. But we need to, to see Mexico do even more. I mean, we need to create Mexico as a safe third country, as it's called, where all of these claims, hopefully, can be processed in Mexico before these folks come to our southern border. What's your confidence level that Mexico will fall through on what it's agreed to, at least here? Well, you know, the president's been pretty tough. I mean, listen, I met with the Mexican ambassador a few weeks ago in my office, and I said to her at the time, I said, do you realize that this situation is not sustainable for the United States, and this administration administration is committed to securing the border and stopping this asylum crisis. And I think they're beginning to understand that. To that, she said what? Well, to that, she said, I don't think she really believed me. And I said, well, uh, just if you continue down this road and there's no change in the status quo and there's no change in Mexico's behavior, I think you're going to see confrontation. That's exactly what the president did. That's gotten these concessions. I hope that we don't have to have confrontation again. You rattled off a few of the things here for our viewers on screen now. Mexican National Guard is deployed on the southern border, up to 6,000, which is a greater number than they had committed earlier. So you've got that. In addition, you've got the asylum seekers returned to Mexico, as you mentioned. Mexico offers asylum seeker jobs, health care, and education, and further action um, if no results in 90 days. And you have that ongoing threat of more terrorists that could come back. Yeah. yeah, it's important to hold Mexico's feet to the fire. We need Mexico as a full and equal partner here. I mean, something that the Mexican ambassador said to me is, is that, well, we just can't have Mexico. We just can't have this many migrants in our country. I said, think about what it's like for our country, where they come to the United States, they're overwhelming our asylum process system, and then so many of them, when they're turned loose into the center of the country, don't ever come back for their hearings. I mean, we need to overhaul this process. The president is right. Right? Congress I, needs to get on its I game. I tell too. you what, the senator, I mean, everybody's watching this every day, and everybody says Congress needs to do something. They do. And nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's, ab it's ridiculous. It is a the total partisan game. The Democrats won't even approve increased humanitarian funding for the border. We need to overhaul our asylum process. We need to build a physical barrier along the southern border. But we've heard that. As a member yeah. of Congress, how do you get everybody together and act? Well, look, I mean, let's start where we should be able to agree, which is we're facing a massive humanitarian crisis with the number of children. Look, these cartels are using children as human shields on the border. I mean, let's just get this fact out there. Every footstep on that border is money for a Mexican drug cartel. That alone ought to be bipartisan reason to act. We need to protect the children who are being used by human smugglers as human shields. That means we have to change our asylum process. You just can't come in, use a child as a shield, claim asylum, and then get released into the country. And the many of these kids are recycled. We, we get, have to stop We this. get it. We, get, we see the problems. And the Wall Street Journal takes on uh, paying for Mexico's wall. In this piece, they write, Trump's use of tariffs as a bludgeon on migrants has economic costs. Do you support the idea of tariffs as, as a threat to Mexico to act? Well, it brought them to the table this time. I mean, the reaction was, was quite remarkable. But if the president had followed through or needed to, would you support that? Well, I mean, I think if it brings them to the table, it's something that we should consider. I mean, listen, as I said in my meeting with the Mexican ambassador a few weeks ago, they were unwilling to talk when the president said, OK, fine, we'll consider a 5 percent tariff. All of a sudden, there was this sudden interest by the Mexican government in reaching some sort of a deal. So, look, nobody wants to see tariffs uh, levied against Mexico, but it drove them to the table. If other people have other ideas or solutions about how we can continue to bring Mexico to the table and get their commitment, I'm all ears, but the president's one, had a lot of success. One last point on that. Back to the Wall Street Journal piece that Sandra just mentioned there. It says, the danger is that future presidents will also view tariffs as a diplomatic remedy for whatever ails them. Congress would do well to take back the emergency and national security blank checks on trade that it's given presidents over the decades. The point to be made is that as long as you've got a good economy, you can use the tariffs to get leverage. But if that economy is weak, 
you likely won't go there. You know, I don't know. I don't think it's quite fair, though, to say that this president has used tariffs as an as a all-purpose solution. I mean, he has been very targeted in what he has done with tariffs. And this was a targeted attempt to get Mexico to the negotiating table, and it worked. But again, I say if, if folks, whether it's the Wall Street Journal or anybody else, have better ideas, I'd love to hear them. But we have a crisis at the border. We need Mexico's partnership, and we need to press forward with it. All right. What do you make of what's happening with House Judiciary calling this key Watergate witness up, uh, the politics involved here? What Talk does it mean? About you. Talk about living in the past. I mean, now the Democrats want to talk about Watergate? I mean, this happened before I was born. I mean, this is a total waste of time. I mean, it's a total waste of time. We just were talking about the southern border. I mean, we need to be working on securing the border, getting prescription drug costs down, and instead they're calling Watergate era figures? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Three days in a row you're going to get a hearing today, get a hearing on Wednesday. Tomorrow you might hold Bill Barr in contempt of Congress. Yeah, I, th I just think it's ridiculous. I mean, the report is out there, the Mueller report's out there for everybody to see and everybody to read. And by the way, Bill Barr, he didn't have to make that report public. The law suggests that he shouldn't make it public, but he did it anyway because he believed in transparency. It was the right call. He's gone above and beyond. Oh, this is just theater to distract. Isn't the this the setting the table for Bob Mueller testimony? Oh, who knows? Maybe. I mean, I, I think the truth is, is that the Democrats want to talk about anything other than the issues the American people care about. They don't want to talk about the border. They don't want to talk about prescription drugs. They don't want to talk about the cost of health care. They certainly don't want to talk about the fact that wages are rising and they don't want to do anything. What, what are you hearing in terms of background on Bob Mueller? Is, is that going to happen? Or I don't not? know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I'm, I'm sure that uh, the Democrats would love for it to happen. They want to keep talking about this. But listen, I mean, I think this is setting up a clear contrast for the country. If you want more investigations into crimes that have been disproven to have occurred, then by all means, vote for more Democrats in Congress and vote for a Democrat for president. Should everything be put to rest regarding the Russia investigation and, and Robert Mueller's probe? I think that the probe is pretty thorough. I mean, 450 pages almost. I mean, no collusion there, no coordination, no conspiracy. I, I don't know how you can be more definitive in terms of what, and it took years and cost millions of dollars. I think this is over. Let's see what happens this week and today with John Dean this afternoon. Now on Iran, Apparently, they're hosting a meeting. A number of world leaders have gathered there. They're not going to talk about certain programs. What are we to take from this? Well, look, the ballistic missile program needs to be on the table. I mean, Tehran is stalling for time, I'm sure. And uh, they don't like the pressure that the Trump administration is applying. The president was absolutely right to get out of the failed Iran deal. It was a terrible deal for our country, threatened the security of our ally Israel. But the intent to have these world leaders there is to give support to the nuclear deal that has now been severed. Yeah, and I'm, I'm worried about that. I think that, look, we need to, our ally in the United States need to be on one page in saying that Iran's move towards nuclear weapons and destabilizing the region is totally unacceptable. We need to hold them accountable, not just for their nuclear program, but for the ballistic missiles as well. And I hope that our allies will join us in that. What did you think of Iowa 2020 over the weekend? How's that shaping up? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, look, I will say this. The Democrats seem to think that they would rather just turn off the lights in Congress and do nothing and mm -hmm. focus on 2020. It is totally dominating Washington. Washington, D.C. It shouldn't be. We have important work to do, like getting prescription drug prices down and securing the border. It's, it's dominating Washington. Totally dominating Washington. Totally. I can tell you in the Senate. It's early. Half, half the Democrat caucus practically in the Senate is running for president. It's, it's completely dominating the chamber. It gives you an idea how much they want to win. Oh, but desperately. I mean, they're so fixated that the hatred for this president is so overwhelming that it's preventing us from getting anything done on bipartisan solutions like health care, like uh, the border. It, it's terrible. We need to move forward. Senator Josh Hawley, great to have you here and great to have you in studio. Thank Welcome you. to America's great Newsroom. To see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you.